Hey, y'all. Uh, hopefully, uh, you all like that new crazy intro I just uh, came up with. <laughs> Good to see you all tonight. Um, thanks for joining me. I, I'm, I'm looking at our cast of characters here in the chat. Uh, lots of uh, familiar names. Thanks so much for showing up. Uh, hey, Jason, uh, thanks for coming. John, as usual. Stephanie, um, uh, my sisters, Penny and Patty. Great to see you guys. Thanks. Um, Tom, uh, Scott, hey, I'm glad you could make it, my friend. Um, so, you know, <laughs> yeah, Penn, <laughs> I see that. So, you know, uh, I didn't really know what I was going to talk about. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, we didn't have an episode a couple of weeks ago, Easter Sunday. Uh, that's family time. You know, I, I went to visit my folks and, 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 um, uh, my family, uh, and I was hoping that all of you were doing exactly the same, which I'm sure you were. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, this evening I, I was really trying to, you know, coming up to this week, what was I going to talk about? Um, and, uh, before we get into that, I wanted, uh, uh, give a couple of shout outs here. Uh, because, uh, there are a few things that have, uh, happened in terms of, um, other people's accomplishments that I, I really want to acknowledge. Sorry, need a little, uh, slurp of coffee here. And, um, first of all, uh, if you haven't had a chance, if you were like me and, uh, I, Hey court, good to see you, my friend. Um, so you know, uh, I wasn't able to watch, uh, you know, the Jeff Freeman, uh, podcast last night live, but he had, um, gosh, uh, Dr. Ian Spooner and, um, you know, Steve Guptill on his podcast last night. And I, I watched it this morning. Um, and I have to say it gang, if you haven't seen that, make sure you go over to, uh, uh, Jeff's YouTube channel. Uh, that's J free nine Oh six J F R E E nine Oh six and watch the latest episode. It, uh, he and Tom Burns, Tom, I see you in the house. Um, you guys, uh, did such a great job with that interview and, and what they were able to do was actually capture, um, just the camaraderie and the friendship between these two guys. Uh, it was just a lot of fun to watch and makes you just want to hang out with them. And, um, which you guys did, which was, <laughs> I, I don't know. It was just really cool. It was really well done. So if you haven't had a chance, yes, uh, I'm going to put that up on screen. John, my friend, John Edwards, uh, J free nine Oh six. That's the YouTube channel. Thanks, John. Um, y yeah, Jan, it was great. Uh, what a great interview. And, um, so, you know, it's such a cool community of, of people. Um, and <clears throat> that that's really the big thing I, I want to, you know, really talk about tonight. I, I don't have a big dog and pony show with, you know, the whole uh, uh, Google Slides presentation and all that stuff tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, instead, I just wanted to talk uh, with all you guys and, um, you know, uh, about this idea of Oak Island research and what that really means. Uh, this is not an Oak Island podcast, you know, uh, ghosts of bacon. I, I created it specifically for, you know, what, what, well, you know, that new intro kind of says it all. It's about ciphers. It's about spycraft. It, it's about, uh, the Rosie cross, you know, and what they were really up to, what they were doing. But a lot of people know that, you know, I've, I've been involved in, you know, research for, uh, the show, the curse of Oak Island. And I want to touch on that this evening because I, I think it's really important to talk about how I am not what we would call an Oak Island theorist. All right. So I really wanted to talk about what that means. Um, because when I think of that, I, I think of someone who, who is just, you know, creating a theory of, of what they think may have happened. And it, it ties in with the whole voiceover of the show. Could it be, you know, that, uh, people have, um, have, have always made fun of, you know, I, 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 I live in a college town. And so a lot of my friends are, are professors and, 
you know, when we talk about uh, the idea of, of Oak Island research, you know, it, it, it I, I end up being the butt of some jokes where they say, oh, could it be, you know, because this is, um, well, uh, you guys have been watching my podcast long enough to know that I'm about facts and logic. And this whole notion of could it be is what's called a fallacy of logic called hypothesis contrary to fact. You know, it's like just making up a, a, a hypothesis and basing a theory upon that. Could it be that X, Y, Z? Um, and, you know, when, when I when I think about that, it, it you know, it's fun. It's entertaining. It, it's a television show. It's meant to be entertaining. Okay. And tonight, what I wanted to do is kind of differentiate between that idea of television show versus reality. And so, you know, uh, what I have done, Hey, Michelle, I just saw you pop on there. Thank you so much. Um, you know, <sighs> Barbara, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm going to put this up on screen. I didn't realize it was going to be that loud. I really didn't. <laughs> so sorry about that, Barb. Uh, but, you know, I, what I want to talk about is that idea of, of uh, reality versus what's on TV. And what we see on TV um, on the show, The Curse of Oak Island, is, is nowhere near. Um, and and a lot, all of you, you know, who are uh, crossover uh, fans of, say, you know, Jeff Freeman's uh, podcast of uh, the Chris Folk Island and beyond and it, with 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 uh, John Edwards and, and others. Uh, you guys know this. Um, and. And, you know, what it boils down to is this idea of let's talk about facts, let's talk about reality and what's really there. And the reason why I, I made the differentiation, I really wanted to call this podcast um, why I'm not an Oak Island theorist is because I, I didn't come up with a theory. Uh, I made a discovery. And, and I, I think it's really kind of important uh, to differentiate between that. And and again, here, here's my friend, uh, Jason, you know, uh, been on the show a few times here. Many things are plausible. I'm not searching for plausible. Thank you, Jason. Absolutely. 100%. You know, uh, what you and I do, uh, and by the way, uh, in two weeks, uh, on that note, um, my guest is going to be, uh, finally, uh, William Russell, my, my friend from across the pond. And, uh, he's going to be, uh, sharing with you some of his discoveries regarding, uh, Sir Francis Bacon. So, and, uh, John, you just kind of summed it up right there. Um, theorists may usurp facts and craft a narrative versus letting the facts and patterns paint the narrative. You know, this, this is a little bit lowbrow, but this is who I am. You know, I, I and, and this evening, everyone, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not trying to poo-poo anyone who has a theory or, or anyone who has been on the show. I mean, anyone who is willing to, uh, you know, go in the war room, present their information and, 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 you know, put their reputation on the line. Kudos to them. I mean, that that's a, a very, frankly, it, it's a courageous thing to do. Uh, you know, you're putting your ideas out there and, and, uh, I applaud anyone who's willing to do that. Um, what I'm talking about is, you know, the idea of making discoveries versus uh, painting murals with your own feces, throwing crap against the wall, seeing what sticks, and then shaping it into a narrative, as John just pointed out. Not to be, you know, too low brow about it, but there it is. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, the whole thing of of, of making a discovery. Here's what you guys need to know about me. And, and you, you've been loyal watchers. You've been watching my podcast, you know, here for 28 episodes. Now this is episode 28. Thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate you very much. Um, I'm all about letting the facts say what they say, um, versus, you know, looking for something. And, I have tried 
on three different occasions to step away from Oak Island research. Cause uh, frankly, uh, there's no incentive to do it. You know, if, if you are, if you're motivated by being on TV, uh, if you want to, you know, if that's, you want to be involved with the guys on Oak Island, I totally get that because they are so cool. They're very awesome people. Um, and if you really want to, um, you know, uh, be a part of that, and then you want to be on the show and you're motivated by being on TV, that's fine. There's no judgment on my part whatsoever. Um, however, I, I'm not motivated by that. Um, what motivates me is just the truth. And the problem is, is that um, Oak Island has cropped up multiple times in my research. It, it's just there when it comes to Sir Francis Bacon and the Rosie Cross. So, you know, um, I, what I really wanted to do this evening was kind of differentiate uh, what that what that really means in terms of uh, discovery versus, you know, creating theories. Um, and <laughs> and once again, you know, um, my friend uh, Tom Burns, co-host the other night, a w- wonderful job, by the way, Tom, interviewing yesterday. Uh, he states, my interest in OI led me to Francis Bacon. Bacon, as I have come to appreciate, is a whole nother story. That's so true, my friend. You know, and you know what? Um, that is um that 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 is really what I'm talking about this evening. So uh just to kind of tell you my story, this is how uh this podcast and Ghosts of Bacon and uh, this book series ha- has come about was because originally, you know, I, I became involved, you know, obviously all of you know the story, my friend, uh, Chris Dona, uh, who, who, who passed last fall, um, you know, kind of sucked me into this world and, um, and it, it, it kind of came about, um, in a way, let me, let me just kind of, let me just going to sh- share my screen quickly. Because I, I, I think this is just cool in terms of how it works here. I'm going to put this up. This image, uh, obviously, is the plaque that adorns uh, Shakespeare's funerary monument in Holy Trinity Church in Stratford-upon-Avon. And what you're seeing here is what's called the Morford Triangle. Now, this was first uh, shared with me uh, back before Chris Morford ever appeared on The Curse of Oak Island. And, um, you know, I, I was chatting with him tonight and, and he gave me permission. I asked him if I would be able to use this image because he, he shared this with me, gosh, four, three or four years ago, uh, back when uh, Chris Dona first introduced me to him. And uh, this is the Morford Triangle. And as you can see, it spells out bacon in a three, four, five right triangle, B, A, C, O, N. And within it, he identified Nolan's cross. And what he was able to do was use this image overlaid on the island. And uh, he also used this uh, in in association with uh, the Poussin uh, Shepherds of Arcadia painting. And this is what started uh, his relationship with Corian Mall. Um, And so what happened was, you know, uh, both of them said, well, Jake, you know, you know, you're into cryptography. You, you re- should really kind of look at this plaque a little bit. And this is what really sucked me in. Um, and so because of those two, uh, that led to my book, the Holy Trinity decryption, where I decrypted the plaque and discovered, uh, the autobiography of Sir Francis Bacon. Now, which one of the cipher texts then led to this map in particular, uh, this is the Samuel de Champlain 1612 uh, navigational chart. Gang, th- this has a series of ciphers on it that when you follow them, it leads you directly to Oak Island. You can use this chart to navigate to Oak Island. And so I demonstrate that in that book, the Oak Island treasure map. Now, Obviously, you know, this is a very complex commercial for my books. But in reality, 
I, I wanted to explain this is how I kind of got sucked in to this whole thing. Now, um, when you look at that, these are things that cropped up, you know, in the course of my research. What once originally when um, I started decrypting that plaque uh, that that Chris Morford and, and uh, Chris Stona got me involved in. Um, the original messages, all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm saying, oh, uh, I used the name Shakespeare, you know, to write these works and so on. All of a sudden, and, and then what I found out, you know, who his true parents were, uh, Francis II of France and Mary Queen of Scots. All of a sudden, I was completely focused on this research. Uh, everything about Oak Island paled in comparison. And so I was basically... Um, completely focused on that stuff. And then all of the messages about Oak Island kind of appeared at the end and cropped up in the background. And so that, that's what led me to, you know, share all of that information with, with uh, you know, the, the people on the Island and so on. But at the end of the day, you know, this was a discovery and it, it wasn't a theory I came up with. It, it's, it's not, um, you know, the, this idea of, um, well, I, th there are a lot of things that I could get into, but I'm not going to, cause I, like I said, anyone who, you know, throws their ideas out there and throws their hat in the ring and, and, and does a war room presentation, kudos to them. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it's, it's less about this idea of coming up with what I think may have happened versus, uh, a discovery I made of here's some information that you all need to hear. And so, um, to that end, uh, the latest book, uh, uh, the Oak Island treasure map, uh, just as a heads up to people, I'm going to be pulling that, um, I'm going to pull it off the shelf, uh, for the simple reason that I have, uh, some revisions to make simply because, uh, I've discovered another map and, um, throughout the course of my research, once again, I, I had backed away from, I wasn't even looking uh, for information about, uh, the curse of Oak Island show or Oak Island, Nova Scotia, any of those kinds of things. And yet once again, um, it just popped up on the radar and, uh, there is a map that provides coordinates, uh, to nothing less than the original, uh, location of the money pit. And so, um, I'm going to be, yes, John, you know, um, there is another map and, you know, the whole, um, idea of this, this, um, research, if you will, uh, I, I just wanted to address the whole idea that, uh, cause a lot of people message me about, you know, Oak Island research and those kinds of things. And, and the best part of the whole Oak Island experience has been all of the people I've met in association with it. Uh, first of all, you know, um, uh, Cortland, all, uh, John Edwards, um, and you know, all the rest, uh, you guys, uh, I, I've, I've actually forged some very, very good friendships and, you know, back in the day, you know, I'm, I'm obviously of the generation of, of people, you know, pre-internet. And then when suddenly people were saying, oh, I met some friends on the internet, you know, I would roll my eyes thinking, how could you possibly make friends on the internet? I, I get it now. You know, um, it, these are people that I chat with on a daily basis. Um, and, uh, you know, you guys, um, have been, you know, really, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, definitely the treasure that has come out of this for me. I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like legitimate real researchers, Court Lindahl, Judy Rudabish, uh, uh, Bill Smith. I'm going to look at my list here. Oh, Stephanie, uh, McPeak Peterson, uh, it, gang, if you haven't checked out Stephanie's, uh, YouTube channel, holy cow, you really need to check out Steph's stuff because Stephanie, I mean, you're killing it. Uh, your videos are, uh, first of all, uh, the production quality is excellent. Uh, second of all, the, the, the information, uh, what you're able to do and, and 
explain complex ideas uh, in, in terms of music theory and all the rest of it. Top notch stuff, you know, great, great job. Um, you know, Scott Clark, uh, a top notch historical researcher here. You know, these, these are people who are, you know, digging in, um, you know, you have Judy who, who is, who is, you know, accessing the Vatican archives and, and doing, <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of level of research she does, uh, which blows my mind, um, of how incredibly, uh, you know, uh, intricate uh, her work is. It's, it's just fascinating. So, you know, people, I, the, the, the big thing that I was really wanted to get across this evening, and like I said, I'm, I'm not here, you know, to crap on anyone's work or anything like that. I'm just, I, I really want to uh, highlight, put a spotlight, if you will, on the work of people that I think are, are, are just doing phenomenal work. And, um, and when I said, you know, I, I called this show why I am not an Oak Island theorist, first of all, first and foremost, uh, that, that idea of theorist, um, yeah, Jenny, uh, as usual, hitting the nail on the head theory to me is like a hypothesis, just a starting point, but you can't stop at whatever coincides with the theory. You have to look at the totality of info. 100%. And so it, it's fine to have a theory, gang, but you have to understand that most um, of the researchers that I just commented on uh, and, and mentioned by name, it's, it's not that they're coming up with theories. It's that they're making discoveries through their research, including myself. I'm, I've made discoveries. Um that just led to information. So the idea that, um, you know, you have a theory, uh, I, I, again, um, I, I think that Rick, uh, Lagina has said it best. He's, he, he always states a theory is just a theory until you hold something tangible in your hand. And that's 100% true. So take that for what it's worth, gang. Um, going through the comments, my friend Amy, all right. Yes, follow the data. The facts are either present or not. Exactly. And when it comes to <clears throat> the uh, idea of um, cipher work, that, you know, um, my friends uh, John, you know, Jason, uh, William, that we all do. Um, you know, that that's what we do. We just follow the clues. And so in the chat, this is funny because John already knows the answers to these questions. He's just trying to, you know, pull court out of the shadows. How so court Lindahl, how does bacon lead you to Virginia? Um, <laughs> and, and so, oh, here's court's answer. Because as opposed to some of the other pertinent places, his family had an influence on early Virginia and later Thomas Jefferson, who employed the three members of the Bacon family. The story of Nathaniel Bacon is also an influence on the Declaration of Independence. Oh, yeah. And and those of you who have not read Court's books, gang, um, you know, he, he's able to just kind of toss out this, this input here and just kind of throw it out there. But... Uh, when you read his books and you look at the level of research and the level of detail there, uh, you you understand why he knows um, what's going on. So, so going back, kind of scrolling through the questions, John, my friend, the original Money Pit, are they digging in the wrong place? Um. Uh, I'll tell you the same thing I, I, I told uh, a few people associated with it. Um, they're about 30 feet off. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Jan, um, that it's a distinct possibility. Uh, 
I don't know if I'm going to do it in association with, you know, Prometheus, if it's going to be like a full on uh, war room or what, but I'm going to share the info for sure. I've already shared it with a few people. Um, Oh, Justin, <laughs> I'm glad you could join me tonight. You know, I was talking about, uh, you know, making friends on the internet. Uh, this is one of my former students, gang, one of my favorites. Um, I have friends all over the world from the internet. It's great. Yeah, Justin, of course you do. I mean, you're just, you're a great guy. So, good. Uh, uh, one of my favorite quotes, John, uh, Joseph Campbell says, follow your bliss. And if you do, you'll find others that are on the same path with you. And isn't that true, my friend? I mean, it's how you and I became friends. Um, we are, you know, uh, you know, kind of following all of those clues where they lead us and they led us to each other as friends. And, um, you know, I, I really, really, you know, treasure our friendship for sure. And I, and, you know, that's just it. It's like, I, I think that, you know, that's really at the end of the day, um, this is kind of what uh, Jeff and Tom brought out of uh, their interview <clears throat> last uh, last night. Um, it, it's the you know that friendship that uh, the fellowship that Dig share. You know they, those guys work together, they hang out together. They it's a real bond, and um, and you know at the end of the day, um, yeah, Woken One. Uh, there's a new map, but it's not a new map; it's an old map. Uh, also associated with that, um, John, I'm going to go ahead and disclose that at some point I want to, you know, share, uh, my, t my take on Xena's map. Um, you know, I was on the show with, uh, Jeff Freeman and, and, and John Edwards, and he had asked me my, my thoughts about, uh, the Xena helper map. And at the time I had no, I had no opinion. Uh, I didn't want to provide commentary on that because it's kind of like a, you know, a, a, a sacred trope, I guess you would say. But <clears throat> because of, you know, my research of, of late, along with some of the other things that have uh, come across my desk uh, from some folks associated with the quest, um, I, I, I took a closer look at it. I read Zena's book. I did a second really close reading of it. And, you know, decided to give my take. So at some point, maybe I'll be throwing that out there, too, for those of you who are curious about Xena's map. Um, let's see. Michelle, you know, you're always <laughs> you're always so, so nice. <laughs> I appreciate you very much. Um Thank you. I, I appreciate the compliment very much, which, and so I'm vain enough to put it up here on the screen so that everyone else can see it too. So thank you for that. Um, that's kind of my point is that, uh, I'm a, a, a small fish in a big pond with other people who, uh, are doing really amazing work. And I, I want, I really want to, you know, highlight and, and, and put them in the spotlight in terms of um, they're doing amazing work in that they're making original discoveries. It's original research, um, as opposed to someone who looks at all the research other people have done and they shape it into a theory and then they, you know, present it. And so I, I think it's really important to, you know, point that out. You know, I mean, I, I I'm looking at, you know, uh, in, in court, you know, I, it's not just because, you know, you're here this evening, uh, watching live and, and you're in the chat. I, I, I think of you and your work and, and how many people have, have kind of exploited it. And so, you know, I wanted to take tonight to kind of give you a shout out because a lot of people don't know that that's what has happened in the past. Um, and, and here, here's just a, for example, this is just, you know, in our group, the ghosts of bacon, um, on Facebook, you know, we, we had a member who was known for, you know, posting some really great, uh, uh, posts about history and, and come to find out, um, this individual was, was, was plagiarizing, you know, uh, they were plagiarizing from court Lindahl, uh, uh, uh James McQuiston, uh, uh, primarily from uh, 
Wikipedia of all places. And so, and then meanwhile, in other Facebook groups, this person has, has accrued quite a reputation, you know, for being a researcher, uh, when in fact, the person was just very adept at, at copying and pasting. And so when I called that person out, I said, listen, you know, you are plagiarizing friends of mine, you know, Quartz, my friend, and you, you have copied and pasted stuff directly from his blog. I've caught you. You need to stop doing that. And so then that person decided to leave the group and block me. And, and you know, it, it, it's one of those Facebook drama sorts of nonsense, which, you know what, um, it's been a very, very long time since I've been in junior high school where I've had to deal with that kind of nonsense. So I don't care. But I, I use that example uh, to demonstrate that there are people who, who, who do not care one iota about the ownership of original research. And court, that's what you do. Um, and, and so I really wanted to, you know, point that out in terms of those are the kinds of things you face and those are the kinds of, and, and that's just on Facebook. That, that's not even on, well, television or radio. And we won't get into that tonight as much as I would like to, my friend, but um, I'd rather not because it's politically untenable in certain circles. Uh, And, and John, you know, what John is pointing out this evening, gang, is uh, these are the kinds of things that uh, we're discovering. All right. So when I started The Ghosts of Bacon, the whole purpose, this podcast was to try to recruit people to try to reproduce some of the results I've been getting. In other words, use the same, you know, cipher systems, uh, you know, some of the uh, same same pieces of information uh, that I discovered in terms of Bacon, Sir Francis Bacon's true identity as the son of uh, Mary Queen of Scots and Francis II to see what else you can find. John, uh, Jason Mercer, uh, William Russell, all you know answered the call. They all started finding a lot of the same information. It's redundancy. It, it, it's reproducible evidence. That's the scientific method. And that's what we need when it comes to original research. Um, oh, Barbara, great quote, uh, wonder, wonderful sentiment. It's all a quest for the truth. Knowledge traded along the path by many is fine as long as people understand they're still on the path and the focus should be on that, on the find. Yes. And, and here's the thing is that, it, you know, if you are on that quest, for the truth and you're, you're able to, you know, stand on the shoulders of others because that's what, that's what we're here for is to let's provide our truth of what we've discovered, our own discoveries. Let's throw it out there. Let's see what, you know, you can make of it. And then if you can take it another step farther, that's excellent. But at the end of the day, um, the people who do that also have to kind of give a nod to, you know, the court Lindahls of the world in my opinion. So kind of. Oh, Tom, you know, as usual, <laughs> right on time. Thank you, my friend. What people need to remain cognizant of is for a lot of people, these topics are a fascinating hobby for people. Uh, Jake mentioned it's much more than that. Thanks for saying that, Tom. Um, you know, it, for, for a lot of people, I mean, this is their livelihood. You know, they, they are writers, they, they are researchers, they're historians. And then when all of a sudden, uh, you know, someone just decides to not borrow, but take their information and then print it and, and, and present it as if it's their own, uh, you know, research. I mean, that's, um, that's stealing and it, it's, it's dishonest. And, um, you know, that that's, I don't know. There, there has to be uh, some accountability for that in the sense of, look, either, you know, please take these ideas into, and, and, and this is one of the things that, you know, I even write in my own books, take this information, see what you can do with it and see if you can take it further. Um, but the, 
the people I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, ha uh, have this call to adventure for, you know, in a sense, I, I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, I know that they are the people who will also say, you know, I, I used the work of, you know, Jake Roberts and, and, and so on to take this another step forward. And so, you know, I, I think that anyone who's willing to do that, um, by all means, that that's fantastic. Hey, there's Zanto, my friend. Uh, Dr. Ian Spooner recently said that there were at least three different time periods in which things and people were active on the island. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, of uh, uh, Zanto, uh, as far as, um, you know, that's concerned, if anyone's going to know, it's Dr. Spooner. Um, 100%. Oh, geez, John. Like, like I need something else on my plate, man. <laughs> Leave it to you. Uh, well, what, what, uh, most of you don't know is that, you know, John and I, you know, talk on a regular basis on the phone. And, uh, the problem is, is that we'll get on the phone with each other. And next thing we know, we're, we're tumbling down a rabbit hole together on this, <laughs> <laughs> something totally random and uh we end up making all these dis discoveries feeding off from each other but uh, he's saying we need to take a deep dive into the declaration of independence for baconian code we know that the code was used in masonry and the signature ciphers are used in anderson's freemason constitution of seven that's a fact many founding fathers were masons oh, John. yeah okay <laughs> After after we get done with our, our our next book, John, together, we'll we'll just uh so kind of <laughs> well you know it John or Court, I'm gonna go ahead and put your quote up here because I, people need to see it in your own words. I see my books quoted on TV and in print all the time with no reference. I don't mind if people like what I say, but I always try to give credit. If I appreciate someone else's work, I absolutely, in, in some cases, people came up with identical ideas later, which is also for absolutely court, you know, and, 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 you know, Court, to your credit, you know, um, you and I have talked about this a lot privately. And, um, and and the reason why I'm putting this out there this evening is because, you know, I, I want to raise awareness and that, that, that this is an issue. And and like I said, you know, I, I'm not casting aspersions uh, to uh, against anyone. But, Court, you and I both know that this is an issue where you have seen your ideas on TV repeatedly. Um, with, with no accreditation, uh, to you. And so, and, and likewise, you know, when, when I, when I'm writing and, um, and here on the podcast as well, if, if I'm quoting someone, I, I give accreditation, uh, because, you know, I'm not going to present someone else's ideas as my own. And the problem is, is that, you know, when it's on TV, uh, People can claim that they came up with it completely independently, apparently. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, when you publish a book, it's copyrighted, period. As soon as you publish it, it's copyrighted. That's copyrighted information. And um, if someone else presents it as if it's their own, uh, well, they've placed themselves in a very actionable position. And so has the uh, uh, television company who might actually broadcast it. I'm just... Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of throwing that idea out there. Yep. I'm going through. <laughs> oh, Kent, I'm just going to go ahead and throw you up there just because. <laughs> Uh, I love you, brother. <laughs> yeah, Wikipedia is great. Uh, <laughs> Fred, science is good. <laughs> oh, Shippy. I mean, there's so many, you know, 
old friends who are all of a sudden just popping on this evening. This is a lot of fun for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, Woken one. I don't know about that. Um, I'm not going to put that one up. No one needs that idea. So, oh, Jason, yeah, you know, here, again, um, it, when we can uh, keep producing the same information in reproducible ways uh, where it keeps coming out from different sources and um, it, John Edwards and I have, you know, really pushing this idea um, in, in, in association with um, Oak Island Research even, um, redundancy the message just keeps popping up everywhere you know as much as i try to get away from oak island research as i'm researching bacon in particular um the messages just keep appearing and so yes the scientific method is definitely producing those those results for sure uh thanks john uh looking at the messages here You know what, Sharon, um, here's an aspect of it that, that, you know, people don't consider. And I'm so glad you brought this up. This is so cool. Uh, this is why it's like, you know, when I do this podcast, it, um, it, so many of you make me think of things in, in a completely different way. Uh, my friend John just keeps you know, saying, Jake, you're so myopic in terms of, you know, ciphers, you know, done, you know, just keep reading the ciphers. We tend to forget about who they are as people. And I think that, you know, this is something that we all need to keep in mind. These are human beings who existed in history as real people and had real relationships uh, with the people around them. And as as more of my research comes out, after my next book comes out and I start talking about who some of uh, Bacon's um, <laughs> real family members were, for example, uh, I, I think that a lot of things are going to come into focus for everyone. Yes, Barbara. Yes, 100%. Always quote your source. You know, give respect where it's due. You know, you want to make sure that, you know, when someone has original research and discoveries that they share, that's not a theory. That that's the, These are factual uh, discoveries that, that when people are going to be using that information and working with it, you have to say where the source comes from. Absolutely. Great question, uh, Fred. Um, what is it about the island itself that draws so many in? Well, in particular, it, it, it's the whole story of how, quote unquote, the money pit um, was discovered. And that's, that story, uh, those of you who uh, are familiar with uh, the show, The Curse of Oak Island, all, know all too well about the three young men who discovered an indentation uh, in, in the ground and above it an oak tree was a pulley uh, that looked like it lowered a treasure down and blah, blah, blah. And then they started digging and nine layers down and so on. That story is complete nonsense in terms of real history as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I don't think people should you know believe that. Um, it's a modern retelling of uh, the legend of the three sojourners it's it, it's a narrative that is uh a part of royal arch degree of freemasonry uh that basically when it comes down to it um that's where it really comes from and i don't think that um you know it, it has anything to do with the original discovery of the money pit and so great question, Fred, but what it is, it's that mystery of a buried treasure and they know that the, something was there, but, uh, it has sucked so many people in. Um, I, I, I suspect that's why. You know, Jenny, um, the idea of copy and pasting, <sighs> You know, a, a, as a high school teacher uh, living in this modern age, um, I, I have to tell you that students today uh, have a lot of difficulty when it comes to thinking. They have outsourced their thinking. 
they think all they need to do is Google something to find an answer. They, they don't have to try to reason it out. They don't have to try to research it. They just Google it. The, the word Google is a verb now. And so um, when it comes to transferring information from one location to another, that's what they do. They simply copy and paste. It doesn't, it no longer internalizes. And then you, you, they, they don't uh, reword it in their own words, those kinds of things. Um, it's, it's a very scary thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. I'm going to put this one up, John, just because, well, it says it all. I mean, this is, um, that th this is something that does happen. You know, it's this, this idea of, you know, real original research taken out of context and changed and shaped into something, uh, that, that, um, suits the needs of the individual, uh, Who's putting it out there? So, is <laughs> that look? John and I are working on that right now. <laughs> so, oh, oh. Court, yeah, this is exactly what we're talking about here. Um, the The whole idea of the, the Templar narrative, for sure, um, is a big part of it. And so, you know, an entire TV series of, of subject matter, other people wrote books about and is featured on said TV show with no reference to the original author. Yeah, for sure. That's that. That's a problem, my friend. Barbara, <laughs> uh, answering Fred's earlier question, Oak Island is popular because, and I'll say it again here, to quote Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, <laughs> pirate song, gold drives a man to dream. <laughs> I like that very much. Thanks. Oh gosh, Fred, um, huge questions. Um, and every single one of these questions, my friend would, would be a, uh, two hour podcast. Um, I have an answer for why that specific Island, um, the map I showed you earlier this evening, uh, because of its geographical location and how the, 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 uh, navigational coordinates it takes to navigate to it um, are the reason why it was chosen by Sir Francis Bacon. Um, again, it, it's it's a two-hour uh, explanation of why that particular one. Um, not to mention the fact that uh, there are multiple locations on the island. There, there um, People keep talking about uh, the money pit. They talk about, you know, uh, the, you know, Sir Francis Bacon's vault, which is, you know, the focus of, of my, uh, research. Um, but at the end of the day, there, there's more than just one or two locations on that Island that are of interest. And I, I will, I will leave it at that. Um, uh, what's going to happen is, you know, it, it's not going to be someone like me, uh, or, or, or someone like, you know, uh, John or court or, or, or other people who have appeared on the show, for example, to use say a, a program like Google earth, that's going to allow them to put an X on the map for, for, uh, Rick, Marty and, and Craig, um, because Google earth is off by up to five meters. I mean, up to 15 feet off. You only have to be off by one in order to miss when you drill a hole, for example. Um, so th it's, it's going to be the technology that they're using on the island right now, particularly the, the Muons, uh, uh, where they are recording uh, 
muons and in the drilled holes to identify voids throughout the island. So that that's really where the answers are going to come as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, Barbara, for sure. Oh, yeah, Jenny. As usual, hitting the nail on the head. Uh, Jenny's getting angry with it. Um, it's also how bad ideas persist. persist. Uh, people don't check the sources to see what it actually said. Um, and, and you're right. It is so frustrating. Um, and it, what, what's really frustrating is, you know, right now, uh, as I've put my neck on the line and, and put my information out there. Um, it, and when it comes to, you know, Francis Bacon and Baconian circles, uh, this, uh, Sir Francis Bacon society, for example, people have their own pet, uh, theories, you know, everyone wants to believe that, you know, he was the son of Queen Elizabeth, the first, for example, uh, illegitimate son of Queen Elizabeth. There's no evidence. I mean, very little evidence to support it. And all of the evidence that supports that supports my discovery uh, that he was the son of Mary Queen of Scots. Um, but no one wants to look at my evidence. And so once again, you know, you have these bad ideas being perpetuated because people want to hold on to them and believe in them and they copy and paste. And that's another um, irritating thing that has kind of come up lately. Um, uh, I've had a couple of the, the, my first uh, negative comments um, on YouTube, which is really exciting for me because I, I love that sort of thing. I, I know it sounds weird, but I, 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 I think that if you're catching flack, you're over the target. And um, what people do is uh, just exactly what you were just saying, uh, Jenny. They, they will copy a list of links to information I've already seen and have already read. And after having read it and discovered uh, the information I've discovered, I can then dismiss all of that and uh, all of their so-called evidence uh, be, as, as being wrong. And yet that's the evidence they use to try to disprove what I'm saying in my podcast, as opposed to actually reading the real evidence and all of the details in my books. So, uh, that, that's definitely, that's definitely, um, a part of it. Stephanie, great question. Um, I haven't talked to Pater, um, uh, in a little while. Um, there was a little bit of controversy there where he was worried about what they might discover. Um, so I'm not really sure why he finally just stopped doing it. I suspect um, at a certain point, um, I'll probably get sick of this too. I, I'm sick of looking at the plaque, for example, because um, there are more messages there um, in, in the ciphertext that I've uncovered. Um, and at a certain point, your eyes just cross and you just say, okay, I, I really can't look at this anymore. Uh, there are still more messages there. Uh, that I haven't decrypted. Um, I've, you know, <clears throat> found snippets here and there that warrant, you know, more investigation. I, I, I suspect that uh, Peter um, looked at it and recognized how much more work there is and it never ends. And he probably more intelligently than I did decided that uh, I'm going to go live my life. <laughs> it stopped looking at this stuff. Uh, that's that I'm, I'm guessing I, I haven't talked to him about that. I, I probably will at some point, but, uh, I, I think Barbara, that's really what, or Stephanie, I think that's what, what's at stake there. Well, Michelle, again, you know, um, I, I keep saying, you know, okay, you know, I, I'm done. I have no incentive to, to continue Oak Island research. Uh, um, 
court, you get this, you understand it. Um, and, and when I say incentive, I mean, uh, you either have an incentive for, you know, socially or, 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 or monetarily, and definitely there's no incentive monetarily. It's a gigantic, uh, <laughs> waste of time when it comes to making money. Uh, you, you, you make a, a small stipend when you do a, an Oak Island presentation, for example. Um, it works out to be less than probably 25 cents an hour when you consider the thousands of hour, hours that you uh, do in your research and a couple hundred hours in, in a, creating a presentation. Those of you who are interested in doing Oak Island research, I, I'm not saying this to discourage you in any way, shape, or form. I, go right ahead. I mean, if, if you want to you know, do this to be on TV or, or, or you have information that you think, uh, the owners of the Island, uh, need to see, have at it. But, um, at the end of the day, I mean, y there has to be an incentive and I, that's why I, I've, I've turned my back on it at least three times, but every time as I'm doing my own research, it, all of a sudden it just pops up and there it is in front of me. And I just say, okay, well, I guess I better pass this on. <laughs> yet <laughs> right court <laughs> that's for darn sure <laughs> um you know um yeah john um uh, interesting about your use of the word gatekeepers you and i have talked about that we'll leave it at that yeah for sure, my friend. Um, and you know what? Um, yeah, Jenny. Uh, a, a part of it is curiosity. I mean, if people are curious about, you know, and, and let's face it, I mean, Oak Island, Nova Scotia is absolutely fascinating. I mean, it, they, they've... Um, there's a huge difference gang between, um, what you see on TV versus the reality. Okay. Um, and there is so much reason to focus on that simply because they have made so many scientific discoveries, uh, demonstrating that something of significance happened there. Uh, and, and then, you know, as I'm doing my own research and all of a sudden, you know, I, I'm, I'm decrypting a map and the coordinates lead to Oak Island, you know, I mean, in association with Sir Francis Bacon and his associates, uh, there it is, you know, um, you can't get away from it, but you know, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, just researching it for its, you know, curiosity's sake, if you want a hobby, it's a good one and it will consume a lot of your time. And at the end of the day, this is really what it's all about, Court. Yep. We just all want to know the truth for sure. 100%. <laughs> uh, I'm not, I'm going to post, put this up here without commentary whatsoever. Because <laughs> this is just John. And yes, court, um, there is that. And, and, you know, who's to say that, you know, this isn't, uh, something that is protected in terms of a, a piece of information or knowledge, uh, that could, you know, kind of, uh, well, just be protected in terms of, of, discouraging people from finding out the truth. <laughs> yeah, Jenny, they just don't look like the guy on, uh, what was it? Uh, Crypt Keepers. What was that show on HBO? The, the guy that's a skeleton here. Yeah. You know, Michelle, you know, again, it, it's much the same thing. You know, people like you who, who do that kind of work to give back to the community and you know it's often one of those thankless jobs where you get called out in the middle of the night trying to take care of other people 
Um, it is thankless in that sense. And, oh, there's my friend, William. That's just it. You have to follow the evidence <laughs> whether you like it or not. And hasn't that been true for you and I here lately? <laughs> I can't wait. Um, by the way, everyone, William's going to be my guest here in a couple of weeks uh, on the next show. So uh, looking forward to that. You guys are going to be just knocked out by some of his information without a doubt. Yeah, Woken One, I got sucked into the rabbit hole without a doubt. Um Well, you know, Barbara, you just brought up a good point. You know, anything else, it's a passion you don't do for the money. And, it, and sorry, it's not there. But, well, you know, that's just it. You know, obviously, it, it, it's, it doesn't matter if it's there or not. Um, you know, I'm all about, like Court had said earlier, you know, we're searching for the truth. And you, you follow the facts where they lead you. And it, the crazy part is that, you know, Oak Island keeps popping up. And so, you know, as long as it keeps popping up, I'm going to be, you know, just keep passing the information along. We'll see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> there it is right there. Uh, it's a great feeling when you get on a roll and find a string of real historical sources that actually proves something. Isn't that, isn't that the truth, Court? I mean, when when you all of a sudden you 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 find this whole string of evidence, you know, that just all ties together, where it all fits together, and you discover a truth that no one has known before. Uh, it, yeah, it, that that is a feeling that is unlike any other I've ever experienced, for sure, for sure. And like you would, <laughs> you and I had mentioned earlier when we were uh, messaging, it is the Oak Island vortex. It sucks you in, and whether you want to be there or not, it still just sucks. <laughs> and yeah, Barbara, it really is the real curse of Oak Island, uh, for sure. <laughs> Without a doubt. All right, gang, listen, you know, I didn't want to do a whole big... Uh, podcast but you know once again i want to just you know give a shout out to <clears throat> if you haven't checked out say uh uh stephanie mcpeak peterson's uh youtube channel you're going to want to check that out she has some really phenomenal information out there you got <laughs> you got to watch her videos it, it's just it, it'll blow your mind uh same thing uh jeff freeman's podcast uh with <clears throat> with tom burns and uh john edwards also on that show um just such, you know, great information, wonderful guests. I mean, I'm, I, are you kidding me? It's like they're able to get, you know, um, <clears throat> able to get uh, Dr. Ian Spooner and 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 Steve Guptill uh, as as guests to just get on and chat them up and just hang out with them and and just kind of reveal the camaraderie that you see on the show. That's pretty cool. Um, so check their their shows out. Um, and uh, in two weeks, uh, be sure to come back here and um, check out the show with William Russell because he's going to have some stuff to, to blow your mind. Yes, uh, the YouTube channel for Jeff Freeman's show is uh, jfree906. Thanks again, John, for reposting that. Um, and Sandlow, I, I agree. I, I think that this is a necessity. <laughs> we need to start a Tom Burns fan club because, you know, he, he's one of those people who always asks the most amazing questions during a podcast. He also uh, has uh, the most wonderful little tidbits of information uh, that he pops in with the chat. So I'm all, I'm all for a Tom Burns pod, uh, Tom Burns fan club for sure. I'm, I'm already a member. <laughs> All right, gang, listen, um, thanks for joining me again uh, uh, for a good time. Um, and uh, we will get together again in a couple of weeks. Thanks, gang. I uh, appreciate your compliments uh, very much. And uh, thanks for joining me. And I'll see you guys next time.